This image right here is showing the is showing the drainage of oxygen poor blood from the brain via a number of blood vessels or veins known as sinuses. Keep in mind sinuses lack the tunica media, they do not have smooth muscle. As such, they are not in capable of engaging in vasomotion, which is vasodilation, making the blood vessel larger, the diameter of the blood vessel larger, or vasoconstriction, which is making the diameter of the blood vessel smaller. So these are all representing sinuses with the exception of the internal jugular vein, which is right here. So we have the superior sagittal sinus, the inferior sagittal sinus, the straight sinus. This short segment right here is the transverse sinus, which gives rise to the sigmoid sinus. So all of these sinuses, once again, lack a tunica media, and they are receptacles for oxygen-poor blood being drained by the litany of cerebral veins that are not seen in this image. Quite a number of veins that are dropping into these sinuses and ultimately all of this blood is leading into the internal jugular vein which is going to bring blood back towards the heart so let's take a look where the internal jugular vein meets up with other veins prior to entering the superior vena cava okay here we have the heart and the superior vena cava draining into the right atrium Dropping blood into the superior vena cava is the right brachiocephalic vein, left brachiocephalic vein. Please keep in mind when we are talking about arterial blood flow away from the heart, that one is taking blood away from the heart as I just suggested. This blood is moving towards the heart. So I will suggest veins merge towards each other to a larger vein, whereas arteries are diverging from each other, move, moving away from the heart. The other thing I wanna point out is these are the right and left brachiocephalic veins. There is a brachiocephalic artery. It's the first branch coming off the aortic arch, but there is only one brachiocephalic artery, whereas there are two brachiocephalic veins, the right and left brachiocephalic veins. This right here is the right internal jugular vein. This is the left internal jugular vein. And it is merging with the right subclavian vein and left subclavian vein to drop blood into the brachiocephalic vein. So once again, the subclavian vein and internal jugular vein are merging to drop blood into the brachiocephalic vein. And we see that on this side as well. Other blood vessels dropping oxygen poor blood into the subclavian vein. We have the external jugular vein. And right here is the vertebral vein. The vertebral vein runs through the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae along with the cerebral artery. As we discussed, the cerebral artery is providing oxygen-rich blood up to the brain, specifically into the basilar artery, which leads into the circle of Willis. The vertebral vein is not draining blood from the cerebral circulation or from the brain. It's actually draining oxygen-poor blood from the vertebral column. So we see the left vertebral vein right here, and this is the left external jugular vein. Most of the blood from the brain is being drained via the internal jugular veins and the external jugular veins are draining blood from the exterior region of the skull, face, and neck. Okay, that's your venous drainage of the brain.